My name is John D'Esposito, and I'm with a company called DevOpulence. And what we do is help other companies improve the quality and speed at which they develop and deliver software and systems through automation. In essence, we use Rundeck to automate our operational tasks. We do this for standard operating procedures, we do this for deployments, and we're now starting to do this for incident management. And it's Rundeck's resource model that makes all of this possible. And what I mean by that is the resource model can seamlessly integrate with modern day configuration management solutions like Chef or Puppet. It can integrate with cloud providers such as EC2. And it does this by consuming whatever tagging or metadata. So for instance, with Chef, it can actually understand the node attributes and pull them in and consume them and actually uh, execute a Chef search. And with uh, EC2, for instance, Amazon EC2, it can understand and consume tagging. And this is really powerful because let's just say you want to execute some commands across a specific application or a specific set of infrastructure, such as across all of your Apache servers that you have deployed in EC2. And the fact that the Run Deck jobs have this awareness provides this great power, in essence, uh, where we can affect many systems simultaneously, and we can do this with high quality, and we can do it with speed, and we can do it automatically. So it really opens up a new uh, world to uh, systems engineers and support folks and operations folks. Um, and we find it a, a tool that is a must-have in our tool chain. And the way that we look at Rundeck is when we, we kind of bifurcate our world, we actually have a build and test side that we focus on. And then at some point in the flow, we look at the deploy and operation side. And for us, when we, when we get to the part of the flow where we move over that line and we start looking at deployments and operations, Rundeck is our main tool of choice and it's very flexible um, it's being improved all the time it's enterprise ready for large enterprises in fact you know we've used it at you know large banks insurance companies um, and I'm finding it being um, adopted more and more at large enterprises and it's very useful and um, I'm not sure how many organizations are able to put some compliance and some rigor and discipline around their operations while providing the agility that they need without run deck. It's really, um, you know, it's really helpful for us. Chat ops is conversationally driven development and operations. And you may be saying to yourself, you know, what the heck does that mean? And I'm going to try to explain it. Um, essentially, Within a chat client, you can enable technologists to directly integrate or execute commands on the tools within the tool chain that makes up their continuous delivery pipeline or their continuous integration or operations environments, directly integrate with them from the chat client itself. And you may be saying, okay, well, why is, you know, why is this important? You know, it's important because it, it is, the, to me, one of the final acts of, of, of the vision of bringing the development side and the operation side and the support side together. So as in this modern day world, as we get in in the morning and we hop into Sococo or hip chat or slack and we start working and we start collaborating chat ops um, allows us to become more efficient because when somebody needs to execute a task they can execute it in the full view of everyone else in the chat so you start to have this transparency and you start to um, uh, be able to share with other folks in full view 
and where they can visualize, in essence, what you're doing and what you're seeing. And that really improves um, the level of collaboration, which to me directly results in you know, more efficiency and more efficiency. What I mean by that is you start to have higher quality um, work being done because people are starting to help each other. Like somebody may run a command and they get the output back and they're not really sure where to go and you have somebody else's eyes on that, they can help that person. So you kind of have this continuous improvement uh, cycle um, where that collaboration just gets much tighter and much more focused. Additionally, I mean, I find myself getting in in the morning and, you know, getting my chat line opened and I kind of tend to stay there. So I kind of have this always on um, mentality where that's my world and that's my focus because I'm, I'm working with my teammates and we're all working together for a specific goal. And if we don't have to, if, if, we, can, if we can be very transparent and we can all work within that same world, even if we're not in the same physical location, um, we can do some really good things. Um, let me try to explain how this chat ops works a little bit at a high level. So the main components of chat ops are these um, chat bots. The two main chat bots are Hubot and Lida. Hubot is more coffee script node based and Lida is more Ruby based. There's others, but those are the two main ones. And they have these rich adapters that have been written and are continuously being kind of improved. And these adapters talk to all kinds of things. Um, but for the purpose of this, let me just say like, for instance, Jira, Jenkins, and Rundeck. Let's just say those are three tools that we might want to integrate with. Um, and those are three that are fairly common. Well, maybe, uh, yeah, they're fairly common, right? So in essence, um, Within the chat client, if I wanted to kick off a run deck job, um, I could first list the jobs, I could pick my job, and I could run the job, and everyone can see exactly what I'm doing, and I can get the results of that job um, to be displayed right within that chat window. So there's some uh, incredible transparency there. There's some really powerful interaction directly with uh, that tool, run deck. And there's, uh, there's some auditing. So people can actually go back and see, instead of having to hop out of the chat client, execute the job, and then maybe copying and pasting something back into the chat, um, it's all there. And um, this, this is where that power comes in. This is where people learn from other people. This is where people, uh, the transparency just allows people just to kind of see what everyone else is doing and to help collaborate and improve. So Coco is one of my favorite chat clients. It's not even a chat client because it's so much more powerful than that. It, what it is is a way of visualizing work and people and giving someone the ability the, to instantly have a meaningful collaborative experience with somebody. And what I mean by that is to instantly be able to do video screen sharing, chat or audio or all of the above uh, privately or w within a group instantly. So it's, it's our tool of choice when it comes to bringing people together, um, technologists together to work in, in ways they haven't worked before. It's, 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 it really lends itself nicely to the, the way that companies are starting to go where they're changing their legacy matrix approach to the way they've done things and they started to collapse and make these teams that collaborate together. Um, and um, it's really powerful. So we, we tend to recommend Sococo because we find it's the best tool to help companies transform. Um, we, we've been successful with integrating Sococo with Rundeck um, because on the operation side, which happens to be a passion of ours, um, we can integrate directly with uh, directly with Rundeck from Sococo. So anyone within Sococo can um, 
have the ability from within the chat client feature of Sococo to integrate with Rundeck to actually start to execute standard operating procedures um, or execute deployments. And um, in, in some cases, we're starting to actually use this model, this Sococo Rundeck model to start to um, handle incidents. And I'll talk about that in a second. But let me describe technically how it kind of works. So um, using the chat bots such as WhoBot and Lita, um, and both of these bots can interface with Rundeck and they both can interface with, with Sococo. And so if you have either of those, and I've been at, I've been at locations or customers where we've actually had both chat bots, but let's just say you deployed Lita and you had Lita working with um, run deck, which I'm, what I mean by that is you deploy Lita, um, the, the Lita server side construct, and you configure it to communicate and authenticate and entitle people to integrate with run deck. And by the way, these tools support the, um, authentication and entitlement model, uh, for run deck. So that's fairly powerful. So with the settings that you have on your run deck system, the security settings, um, kind of transfer over. So, in essence, we would spin up Lita, we would configure it to communicate with Rundeck, and we would also have um, the ability to configure Sococo to talk to Lita as well. So, if you could imagine a user inside Sococo, inside a room inside Sococo, and maybe it's not just a user, it's, it's a team, and they're working together on a deployment. And what I mean by that is there's a bunch of developers and engineers, and they're kind of just doing their daily work. They're, they're doing builds, they're doing deployments, and they need to um, um, just push a new, a new uh, need to deploy, deploy a new version of something. And so right from within inside the Sococo client, someone could issue a command to run deck to actually kick off a deploy job, which could be, by the way, a workflow of many jobs that work together. And with, as that job is running, as that job kicks off that workflow and the workflow is running, um, there can be interactions to understand what the state is, the output of certain jobs within the workflow. And without having to come out of Sococo and to go over to the run deck console, everyone within that are, that's collaborating within that session can actually see what's going on. And it's, you start to get these efficiencies and um, you start to gain um, just more speed and more, more quality and I think just more camaraderie, actually. And the collaboration is better and I just think people start to work better uh, together. And um, that's really important but so we use that for deployments I just gave you the deployment example uh, another way we use it is for standard operating procedures if we need to restart something or just let's just say you have your you have your um, your 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 scripts that you typically use for standard operating procedures and you have you have them nicely um, packaged up in run deck um, under under projects and um, they're certainly being supported through uh, source code management, um, like uh, stored in Git, and Rundex pulling them from Git if somebody makes a change. Um, just think about having you know, the ability to actually restart a Tomcat server from right with inside Rundex, um, or just issue some other type of maybe custom jobs that people have written in any language, right? Bash or Ruby or Python or whatever. Just be able to kick that off. And what's neat about it is you can get uh, response if you you know you, you can get the output of that job uh, or those jobs um, but you always have the audit trail the deeper audit trail if you want to actually if in essence you want to go over to the run deck console but within this world within this always on world of Sococo and in this world of collaboration um, we can essentially do our deployments we can kick off our standard operating procedures we can get the output we can get the state and we never had to leave that um, that experience. One, um, one new way that we're looking at this combination is, uh, I shouldn't say looking, we've actually done it, but we're trying to actually promote this is for incident management. And what we're starting to do is get customers to 
look at this combination as a way to better focus on, uh, on problems. And so if a problem is detected and people need to then come together to work on the problem, what we are starting to do is um, develop some automation where we can choose a room in Sokoko to be the room, this virtual room, where we work on these incidents. We actually automatically have our jobs associated with that application or within with the infrastructure in general. We have those jobs available within that room inside Sokoko. And when I mean jobs available, we have the run deck integration, the ability to execute those jobs. And this is starting to really change the way that uh, folks on the support side think about how to handle incidents. And it's really effective. It's much better than uh, those critical situations where at O Dark 100, people are on phone calls and everyone's trying to figure out what's going on, even if they're in chat sessions. And if people need to break out into other rooms to quickly have a one-off to kind of check something, it really doesn't disrupt the flow, the general flow of the, uh, the incident that's being managed. So it's kind of, it's a really productive way of really starting to address incidents. And I think this is going to be really powerful and it's going to be really interesting and this is something we're going to try to um, to move forward. So if you get a chance to um, use these tools, I think this is a powerful use case that has a lot of potential and um, we're, we're, as you can tell, um, we're really passionate about it and we're, look forward, we're looking forward to helping customers um, uh, address those incidents um, much quicker and much better at a higher quality. One of the things that they like most about chat ops is that they can take their everyday tasks and put them in one place. This is really important to people that they don't have to kind of bop around to do the things that they need to do. It's located in one spot. Um, to, to that point, um, they don't have to remember URLs and passwords on different systems because they're you know, authenticated to their chat client and it's their chat client interfacing with the chat bot. Um, and the chat bot is actually interfacing with the tool, such as Rendeck, um, they don't have to worry uh, about um, remembering those things. So that's, that's kind of neat too. Um, another one is the passive learning experience. Having everyone collaborating together in this, this transparent kind of state, it really does help uh, junior level folks or just people trying to learn more about other other components or other technologies, it really does help um, get somebody else up to speed because they can actually see the commands that they're executing and they can see the output and and there's there's a history of it as well, um, which is really important. There's like this audit capability you can go back in time. Um, it also improves um, remoting to a certain extent. And what I mean by that is most of these chat clients have mobile capabilities. So if you know if you're if you need to support something and you're um, out of the office wherever you are and if you have your phone you can actually open up the chat client and you can start interfacing with your system so that becomes um, really powerful as well and I would say just lastly and I've kind of repeated this uh, over the course of this interview is that it definitely improves speed uh, and quality and repeatability so in essence, um, you know, once people get into it, they start to, you know, understand the value, feel the value, if you will, and they really start to appreciate it. And I think it's really tough to take away from them, to be honest with you. So um, thank you.